Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics, and this is the Hollow Sun Solar Charging Site. This thing created quite a stir when it was initially unveiled at SHOT Show uh, 2019, I believe. And it was just in the booth, and there was no big conversation about it. People would just pick it up and check it out and try to figure out what they are looking at. And that was one of the early, early, early models, which is not what actually went into production. Hollow Sun, probably about, I'd say four to six months after that, sent me out that version uh, as part, part of the T&E process. And then they sent me out the version that was actually going to be going into production, which I've had for uh, right around a year. Some of the big changes, uh, getting right into the features. It's got a changeable reticle feature. It is a batteryless unit. It does have a battery. It's an internal battery. You don't have to change the battery. This particular one is for the MOS footprint, and there will be ones offered for other OEM footprints, which precludes the need for a mounting plate and also gives us the use of traditional height sights. Uh, I mount this directly into the MOS, put the screws in just like I normally would. It's got a good fence there because it's the same, same overall size as the plate. The tolerances, at least for this one, were very tight. And then I've got a 50,000 hour ideal battery life of something I don't have to change the battery in. Uh, anytime it comes in contact with light, anytime the solar cell is powered by fluorescent light or the sun, the big orange ball, it's going to be recharging, so it's resetting that 50,000 hour clock. And if you're doing math at home, 50,000 hours is more than a year. Even if you half that, you're still getting more than a year, and that's assuming this thing would never get to charge, which it's going to. Uh, I talked about it on, on a few social media platforms, and one of the concerns that people brought up was, well, it's going to be carry concealed, so I'm worried about the battery dying. That's not going to happen, and I can tell you that definitively because I've had this thing long enough where it was spending sometimes a week or longer in a deep, deep, deep dark corner of my gun safe while I was on the road teaching classes. It was in there left behind because I couldn't take it out and show it to people at the time, uh, and I'd come back and I'd grab it out of the safe and immediately check it out, and my dot would be nice and bright. It's auto-adjust only, so I got that changeable reticle button right back here, but it's auto-adjust only. Another thing that gave me pause, because my history, my feeling of auto-adjust only optics is they're usually not smart enough to know when you're using a weapon-mounted light. They work well in natural lighting conditions, but if I press a weapon light down range, or I've got light coming back at me, the auto-adjust system would be like, I don't know what to do. And it would usually give me a very dim reticle that was very hard to use. This optic, the SCS, has multiple photoreceptors. Right, photoreceptors is actually what's in the eye, so it's not technically called that. Let's just say photo cells. They detect light and they all communicate with each other and give us a better average for light performance. So during the review process, I spent a lot of time using this thing in low light conditions, shooting in multiple different lighting conditions, uh, both photonic barriers, cross lighting, back lighting, front lighting, side lighting, all the lighting that I could possibly get. And then of course, natural lighting conditions where the sun was behind my target very early in the morning or behind me very late in the evening, depending on which range I was using. Pretty much any lighting condition I could put this thing in. I also ran it with two different types of WMLs. I used a traditional Surefire X300U and a, a um, cloud, or I'm sorry, Modlite uh, PL350. Uh, which uh, has a little bit more horsepower than the X300. That might be something like, oh, what if your weapon light's super bright? The reticle's there. It's great. And that push button change your reticle is something that might appeal to some people. I ran it on the Tuamoy dot the whole time. The one thing that I do notice about this, because it is auto adjust only, just the first thing I noticed in that first 500 rounds of the 2000 round review, is even though it's quoted as a Tuamoy dot, it's much larger than that. In almost every lighting condition I used, it seemed like I'd taken the two of them away and turned it almost all the way to maximum brightness. Still, it takes up a reasonable amount of the window, but gives you enough glass on either side, top and bottom, to easily see through and be target focused like you're supposed to be. But I never felt like I was looking through a two of them dot. I always felt like it was blooming a little bit, which in the grand scheme of things, not a big deal. After the first 500 rounds, I went ahead and did the burn down, which is 500 rounds as quickly as possible to see if that accelerated round count would identify any issues that I wouldn't notice with the same round count over a much longer period of time. So three minutes versus three hours, three days, three weeks, so on and so forth. Here's your burn down.
no loss of zero, uh, no flickering, no fading. I didn't see any issues with the refresh rate, which is another interesting topic that I should bring up because someone out there is probably waiting to see if I talk about it. On an auto-adjust only solar-powered optic, and even though technically it's not solar-powered, it's powered by a battery, uh, do I have refresh rate issues going from target to target to target rapidly, or do I notice any flicker or fading on draw stroke or transitioning or anything like that? My answer is no. Uh, and I'm really critical over emitters. I hate when I can see a flicker when I'm moving from target to target. Some people don't care. I do because I don't like stutter. I like really high quality, real high output refresh rate. So I have a constant laser beam versus a cheap laser pointer on the wall that looks like a perforated line. It's not something I want when transitioning from target to target. No issues there. Uh, absolutely great performance. Getting through that last thousand rounds, it actually has a much higher round count than that. But this video is just about the initial 2,000 rounds of the review. Um, One-handed manipulations are something I do, and the, the whole purpose behind that is if I have to shoot one-handed, I can use the optic body itself to manipulate the slide in order to you know, close the slide, reload the gun, clear a malfunction, something like that. No issues there. Uh, other than uh, cosmetic marring to the finish of the optic body, uh, performance was great, accuracy maintained constant, different lighting conditions, very lighting conditions, the battery, battery performance has been great over the period, the extended period that I've had it, the extended round count that I've been shooting it. Of course, the, the other question is durability. As you guys know with my review process, I do a drop test every 500 rounds, which is a shoulder height drop on either flagstone or pavement. Uh, and then an accuracy check after that. So for a 2000 round review process, you're gonna get four drops and we're gonna see if the optic maintains zero and also if any damage occurs, failure, electronic failure, glass breakage, things like that. So before we get into that, let me show you a five round group I fired at the zero distance of 25 yards before I did the first drop test. This is just a confirmation group of the zero shooting 124 grain gold dot. And here are your drop tests. I was expecting some lens flaking, maybe a crack or two, nothing really bad, but I was expecting something to happen because even though it's a very stout little optic, stout little guy, it's a very small optic with a whole bunch of gun above it. And I drew, do my drop tests with loaded mag because it's probably what's gonna happen if the gun, uh, sudden impact or you actually physically do drop your gun. Most people are like, oh, drop test, you're never gonna drop your gun for shoulder height. It actually does happen. My main reason for doing the drop test more than that is the gun taking impact while it's in the holster. And I do duty testing. Um, concealed carry, I wouldn't necessarily worry about drop testing as much, but all my testing is for duty holster carry. Uh, that's how I started it, that's how I'll continue to do it, that's the standard that I maintain for all the optics that I'm gonna test. Um, but getting back on point, here's a five round group fired 124 grain gold dot, same zero distance, 25 yards, after the final drop test. Zero maintained. Not only was zero maintained, the optic didn't suffer any issues other than cosmetic marring, gouging, scratching to the actual optic shroud, the optic body. The glass quality remains clear. One of the things that I had questions asked about since we can now move on from that is what's the sight picture look like? I gotta tell you guys, uh, cameras aren't eyes. So showing you, like I will right here, showing you what it looks like through a camera's perspective is definitely definitively different than what you'd see if you actually picked the optic up and looked through it. And I, I, I hopefully everybody understands that. Some things can look much better on video than they do in person, and the opposite can also be true. Uh, there is a notch filter. It is noticeable in certain lights, that very vague blue tint. The distortion to my eye is not really noticeable. Uh, there's a little bit at the very top of the window, but you're probably not going to be using the very top of the window to aim anyway. Uh, it's very, very subtle, and it's only noticeable when you're aiming at certain types of targets or into certain types of conditions or certain types of light. But, I mean, everything that you're getting from this optic, one of the biggest appeals to me would be the fact that it, it goes right on into MOS. An MOS is the most common gun that we see in law enforcement. It's also one of the most common optic-ready guns that people buy instead of having their gun milled or seeking out some other aftermarket gun. So you pick up a Glock MOS, a 19, a 17, whatever, you can buy this SCS, and you're done. 
like you don't have to get any aftermarket plates as long as it's implied you're installed correctly and you torque it correctly you're now good to go and you don't have to worry about removing it to change your battery every year or every two years another thing that's going to appeal to certain people is because i can forego suppressor height sights with this thing i can use whatever sights are already on the gun hopefully metal sights of some sort uh I have a shorter potential learning curve for acquiring the dot and starting to use the dot if I'm transitioning from iron sights as my primary method of aiming to a red dot as my primary method of aiming. Uh, I know I teach quite a few uh, red dot specific classes, both instructor and open enrollment and user classes. And one of the issues that people have is one of the first concerns that you run into with the red dot is, is making the transition, is picking up the dot on the draw stroke consistently. Also picking up the, draw, draw, uh, the dot coming from a reload, a malfunction clearance, a ready position, things like that. Um, this definitely can give someone a shorter pathway, especially if they're not able to go to a class and learn really good technique. Uh, this can help. You can go with your traditional draw stroke, your tr traditional presentation you've been using to pick up iron sights, but just make sure you stay target focused. And as the gun comes into your window, there's my reticle and I'm good to go and I can start doing my thing. Uh, even if you're one of those people that uses your iron sights to find your dots, which is not optimal, it's not ideal, it is, a, it is literally a little bit slower, um, not a big deal. I think this optic has a lot of critics and I get it. Uh, I was critical of it. I did not initially when I found out about it. I was like, well, that sounds dumb, but it's not. Uh, I think the technology is definitely there and it's definitely an innovation. And I know that word gets thrown around a lot, but this is the smartest auto adjust optic I've ever seen. If they could put a manual option on it, I'd be all about it. Especially seeing as I have an ideal battery life of 50,000 hours and that clock gets reset anytime I'm around light that will charge my photovoltaic cell to charge that internal battery. Uh, the internal battery itself is going to have a shelf life just like any rechargeable battery would. Uh, quote that I'm hearing unofficially is in the 10 year neighborhood, which if you get 10 years or plus out of an optic, like it pretty much paid for itself. Um, I know there's concerns over why I carry concealed. Look guys, I'm telling you, man, I, I, I was leaving this thing in my safe uh, at least a week at a time between range trips when I'd you know go out of town teach a class come back So I'd fly out on a Monday fly back on a Thursday I wouldn't go to the range until the following Monday uh, Or sometimes if I have two or three classes back to back this thing would sit in the safe for three or four weeks now It's in the dark, so it's drawing less energy But, but it's gonna do that when you carry it concealed underneath the appendix under your jacket your fishing vest Whatever it is that you choose to use to conceal your guns same principle applies. I have not in right around a year experienced any reticle brightness issues or charge issues or fading or dimming or refresh rate issues with this optic i i mean i understand like you don't want to trust it and you shouldn't until you verify uh, for my personal edification, for my personal opinion, for my personal feelings, this thing is definitely verified itself. And I'm excited to see them release the, this for other OEM footprints like the Core, the FN 509, uh, and whatever else is out there that uh, Walther PDP, there's some other really popular guns that have OEM footprints where you could just go ahead and throw one of these on it and not have to worry about anything else. Uh, and I think that'd be pretty cool. So if you're looking for an optic that you that you can use regular height sights with. It's got a window similar to comparable to size that you'd get from a uh, traditional red dot sight that you'd see on a full size pistol. Um, you don't have to change the batteries out. It has auto adjust only features. It's got two reticle options uh, and it's reasonably priced. The SCS should definitely be something you should take a look at. I'm Eric Count with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.